De profundis midlands dark, considered attractive, lonely in digs, awaits advent genuine chum with high Christian ideals, but retaining keen sense humorous. <laughs> Today we're at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern to hold an event to celebrate a personal advert, the Lonely Hearts magazine essentially from 100 years ago. The link declared itself as the great social medium. It was a way of connecting people, particularly in a climate around the First World War, which the founder, Alfred Barrett, kind of saw as a, a crisis of loneliness. Uh, people had lost people in the war, there were lots of war widows, um, and this was a way of really connecting people. But it was actually then used even more kind of subversively by gay people in the 1920s, uh, men trying to meet other men. The link essentially was, I think, the kind of dating app of its days. Uh, this was the way that men could meet other men in an era, though, that was essentially criminalising their love. When I first came across these records about a year ago, I was completely amazed, really blown away. So I felt there needed to be a way of getting these stories out there. With the help of being human, we've got this event at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern today, um, and the idea is essentially to use these classified adverts from the 1920s uh, to kind of celebrate um, these voices that were suppressed in the past, that weren't able to be as loud and proud as maybe um, they wanted to be. My name is Tim. Um, I will shortly become Timberlina. And my role has been to sort of take uh, some of the classifieds and sort of give them a personality. You, you can really get this kind of minuscule sort of portrait um, of, of who this person is in literally 25 words. Lonely London NW, young man, educated, refined, literary, artistic, bohemian, can you see a pattern emerging? Unconventional, very lonely. <laughs> Six male friend, 1725, photo appreciated, London preferred. <laughs> In copies of the, of the link, there are uh, these kind of subversive coded messages. They use words like bohemian, they signify interest in certain things, so there was almost like a, a kind of use of a queer canon of uh, literature and art that they would reference that kind of signified to other people that, that they were looking for a relationship with another man. It's quite moving to see the code that people had to use um, and they felt that was the only way they could meet other people. Um, there's also lots of mentions of loneliness and feelings of isolation. There's an element of desperation amongst them and there's a point at which that desperation becomes determination and I think as a queer you can sort of understand that. You know from my experience I was always kind of desperate to find other people like myself. Uh, who I could just kind of create relationships with. About a year ago, I found uh, copies of this publication, The Link, at the National Archives. Uh, essentially, they're actually uh, found in a police file. And actually, The Link was being looked at as a criminal investigation because it was seen to kind of be corrupting uh, public morals. Following on from uh, some of the correspondence in The Link, the police trace down individuals um, and in fact we have a particular individual, uh, Ernest, who was found uh, in Belfast, 22 years of age, uh, with hundreds of letters on him between men, himself mainly and other men. There's a particularly moving excerpt from a letter between Ernest and Jeff. It says, I fully understand your letter, your letter, old chap, and can assure you that what you desire in the way of a charm is also my own desire. I cannot understand why it should be considered a criminal offence for two people of the same sex who are fond of each other and mutually agreed to commit sodomy. If I become really fond of another young fellow, I always desire to bestow my affection upon him in its most ardent form. From your letter, I gather that we should be as one mind on this topic. What's particularly moving, I think, about these records is they're incredibly rare, um, they give an amazing insight, but there's a kind of almost contradiction that they actually come to us because they are from police criminal court records. So although they're amazing, it's, it's now looking back quite sad to think that that's the reason um, they, that they do survive today. I think it's really valuable for us to hear these stories now because 
The link was founded on the premise of being for, for the lonely. Um, we're now in, in a situation where we have this incredibly like mainstream commercial queer culture. We have these apps. We can, in theory, access people 24-7, 365 days a year. And yet there is still this loneliness, this all-pervasive loneliness. Getting these stories out is so important. Um, I think partly because these people weren't able to speak openly themselves in the past, so it feels important now to shine a light on these voices. At the National Archives, we hold uh, a 1,000 years of history, around 11 million documents, and within that, there are huge amounts about when the state was interacting with LGBT people in the past. Um, so there's loads of potential in terms of the records. 